Perhaps a good example, this is a story that's told from the Spanish journals when the explorers were coming over uh, looking for new routes into this world in the 14, 1500s. One of the routes took them around the coast of South America and the Spanish galleons that were making this journey, sometimes journeys took many months, up to a year, they set ashore for supplies in a place where the Spanish had never recorded being before, and they were met on the shores by the indigenous people of that area who apparently had never seen white people before, had never seen Western technology before. And fortunately for this particular story, one of the first men to meet them on the shore was the shaman of the tribe. He was the holy man. So here the holy man of the tribe meets the Spanish as they're coming ashore. They left the large ships out on the water and they came ashore in smaller rowboats. And however they communicated in whatever language they were using, the holy man asked them, where did you just come from? I mean, they've been here for years. They've never seen people like this coming up onto their shore. And however they communicated in return, the Spanish said, we came on this little boat from that big boat with the wooden planks and the canvas sails out on the horizon of the ocean. And the holy man looked to where the Spanish were pointing and he couldn't see that ship. The ship was there and it was of a pattern that was so foreign to his frame of reference, it made no sense to his conscious recognition. He didn't recognize it. And as I hear this story, I often wonder, how many times does that happen in our world, in our lives? How many times do things happen right in front of us, and maybe we disallow it because it doesn't make sense in terms of our frame of reference? Is it possible there's a whole separate world going on here that we haven't recognized because we don't allow for it in our paradigm? Well, because this was a holy man, because he was a shaman, he was fascinated by the possibility that these people came from something that he couldn't see. So another individual may have dismissed it. The shaman worked with it. And eventually, what he said, in a matter of moments, he says, you know, if I look out of the corner of my eyes and I squint just the right way and redefine the shape of my eyeball, I can begin to make something out on the horizon. And in just a few moments, he taught himself how to see a pattern of matter that he had never been exposed to before. He taught himself to see that. That happened to him on the shore. Miles away was his village, and the people in his village didn't have the same experience that he had on the one hand, and within just a couple of days, on the other hand, they too benefited from his experience because they then were able to see what was happening on the shores. How did that happen? They weren't witnessing with him on the one hand. On the other hand, they learned through his experience. The term we use today is called collective resonance. And what it means to us is that every time one person chooses a new way to respond to the challenges of life, each time an individual chooses a new option, that person then becomes a living bridge for all the others who choose to follow in that person's path. It's not about imposing will on anyone. What it is about is that person now that chose a new way, that chose a new path, they have created a template of a new possibility very close to the consciousness of all others who choose to follow, and that template now becomes more accessible to the next and the next and the next. The shaman on the shore, he chose to see a new way, and through collective resonance, others benefited from his experience.